My heart has followed all my days Something I cannot name Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage where Sean and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Tennille. And I'm Sean. And as you noticed, we actually skipped an episode date there. Right. Uh, because the last episode turned out to be almost 40 minutes and took a long time to edit. Mm -hmm. So that's why we skipped an episode. Yep. Uh, I, I'm assuming this is going to be a lot shorter, so we'll be back on the regular schedule again. Yep. Uh, but this week we watched... Shin Bone Alley. Shin Bone Alley. <laughs> <clears throat> it is a 1970s... American animated film. Yes. Uh, based off of the Broadway musical by Mel Brooks and I forget the other person involved. Did you not write it down on your I list did write it of down. notes? I wrote down a lot of other things, but I forgot to write down this person's name. Who so, is it? Music by this person and then writing by Mel Brooks. Okay. Hey, Mel Brooks, I know that name. Yeah. He's made a lot of comedy musicals and then eventually movies. Yep. And I mean, that's what this is. He wasn't involved in the production of this at all. This from particular what I movie? Tell. Yeah. Like, but I he just did like the original screenplay. Right. And then this is just an adaptation of that. And that Broadway musical was an adaptation of a different source material called Archie and Mehetabel, which was like... Uh, uh, newspaper? See, like story? Oh, well that would make a lot, a lot of sense with the framing device. Yeah, and, um, yeah, it, it's interesting. Like, I'd never heard of these characters before. I know I've heard. Choose your gay? Choose your gay? I mean, yes. And I didn't know what it meant, but now I do. Um, but no, I know I've heard of Shinbone Alley before in the past. I don't know where. Maybe it was just like some documentary about Mel Brooks I watched or something. But like even watching this, there was something kind of familiar. Eerily familiar. Yeah. It's like, like, I feel like I should know this. But somehow I don't, but it feels familiar. Yeah, and then looking it up when I was doing my research, like, it doesn't... Th there wasn't anything I found that was like, oh yeah, I definitely should know what this is because of this thing or something. Because, because of this blank. Is, yeah, because this is a fairly unknown film from what I can tell. Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't do all that well in the box office. I don't think it really has, like, a cult following of any type. It's... I, I don't know, but there's just something kind of oddly familiar about it. Yeah, it's like all of the weird poetry feels really familiar. The mm -hmm. song, Two's Your Gay, feels very familiar. I don't know what it is about this movie. I don't even think that the original Broadway musical was very popular either. Like, like it did okay, but like it wasn't a hit or anything that would be like a lasting effect on our cultural <laughs> interpretation of things now. Like, I don't know. It's just, it, maybe I'm completely wrong, but from what I was looking up, it seems like this is a fairly, like, small deal kind of property. Man, the, the majority of this uh, episode is just going to be us going like, how do we know this? <laughs> I, let's well, let's stop with that and let's yeah, I'm, let's move on. I am curious though. Mm -hmm. Like, have you guys heard of this before? Like, let me know. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, Archie Mahedavell, Shinbone Alley. Brief story synopsis. Yes. A newspaper man feels a newspaper man poet man feels down on his luck and feels like the world is horrible and he doesn't deserve to live in it, so he kills himself by jumping off a bridge. Mm -hmm. And then he crawls out as a cockroach. Yeah. Because it's... What an interesting framing device. Because it's poetic. Well, I guess it's not really a framing device because it doesn't really end with this. It's just something that happens at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's just, oh, now the main character is a cockroach and he knows all these other animals like rats and bugs and Mahitabel, a female cat. Alley cat. Alley cat lady from Shinbone Alley. 
-hmm. and she is, how I say, a lady of the night. <laughs> She's promiscuous. <clears throat> mm -hmm. She sleeps around a lot, and obviously in the 1970s, that is heavily frowned upon. Uh, I would like... <clears throat> Actually, not so much in the 70s anymore. Yeah, I would say probably when this musical first came out, like, this was a lot more biting and risque, because, like, the original Broadway musical first had, like, its first showings in, like, 1957. Oh, yeah, then absolutely. So this would be a lot more, like, biting, edgy material then. But, like, now, now like, in the 1970s, oh yeah, no, this is this. just, like, very light edge. <laughs> but either way, these are our two main characters. She sleeps with a lot of guys. Archie thinks that's a bad thing and she shouldn't do it. Every now and again, he will... Chastise her. Well, chastise her, but also do random soliloquies on random bugs he met. Uh, eventually, she gets knocked up. She has a... A litter of kittens. A litter of kittens. Oh, the whole time Archie really wants her to stop being so frivolous and actually just settle down and cat. get a job, which is becoming a house cat. Mm -hmm. So once she has the kittens, after trying to get them murdered in a storm... <laughs> oh my goodness. She's just like... I love my head of bell. It's like, oh no, what would happen if I... If uh, I just let them sit out in the rain. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> oh no, my poor kitten. Someone, help, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Either way, she finally decides to settle down and become a house cat. And she does it and she's like, this sucks. But also, at least it's a survivable living. And... Also, Archie, you're not allowed to be here because... Uh, you're a cockro cockroach. You're a cockroach. So you're not allowed to be in high class society. Mm-hmm. Because is very, very, very clearly this whole movie is a play on... Commentary about class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this whole musical is definitely very much a commentary about class. And in the end, Mahinabel is like, you know what? Screw this house cat life. Screw my my children. They yeah. can stay in the house pet life. Uh -huh. I'm coming back and I'm going to Tuz your gay out here. Tuz your gay. Tuz your gay. Whatever. In Shinbone Alley and I'm going to keep doing what I like to do. And everyone's happier for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Tuz your gay, in case you're wondering, translates to be happy, always happy, something to that extent in French. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as, like, uh, I feel like, uh, you know, this whole story, the whole meaning, like, behind it is just like, yeah, you know. You don't need high society to be happy. Or a job. Or... Right? Like, but I feel like that's the commentary in, like, a very, like, edgy way. You know what I mean? Like, for the time that mm -hmm. it came out. Um, like, it feels very much like a... A, a non message. <laughs> Don't worry. Be happy. But like without actually telling you what it means to be happy or anything mm -hmm. like that. I don't, I don't know. Like I enjoyed this movie. I actually thought it was a lot of fun. The animation, I liked... while not amazing, held up pretty well because of the art style. Yeah, like I really liked the art style. I liked how scratchy everything was. Mm -hmm. It looked grungy on purpose, uh -huh. which was nice. So then when we actually got to like the the house cat section where she's in like a nice house, everything's like overly ornate and garbage. Clean. Like, clean and pristine. Not garbage. I know. Garbage is the rest. I know, but like garbage is in like, ugh, this is the way over the... modern urban, urban term. It's way over the top. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought this movie was fun. I like the songs. I like the characters. There's some weird tangents Archie has that I'm just like, yeah. why stop? Why are we taking a sudden tangent about him calling all bugs to war against humanity because he's a jilted nice guy? Yeah. Because Mahinabel doesn't return his affections? Because he's a cockroach and she's like, are you kidding? I'm a cat. <laughs> and I'm like... Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't know. This this movie was fun. Mm -hmm. Like it's not great. It does it's not very deep. 
I should say. I think it thinks it's a lot smarter than it is, but it's a pretty just kind of surface level... Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, we're edgy TM because it's about the lower class TM doing things that the high society doesn't really... Looks down on. Looks down on, and they're happy doing it. Mm -hmm. I do that's, like the... That's the, that's the movie. Yeah, I do like that, you know, it does have the basic message of, like, Mehdebel just being okay with who she is. Which, I mean, it's not like that's a lesson she needed to learn. It's just a lesson that, like, she needed to learn to not care about other people caring if she was who she was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it's mostly Archie who's being like, hey, yeah... He's trying to it's be the really, voice of reason, but really he doesn't need to be. It really bitch you in the ass when you, when you try and change your friends, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not making a whole lot of sense, but... No, he feels very, like, the obnoxious, um, like... I want to He's very, like, a, pre a preachy type. Oh, yeah. He's the preachy type. He's just like, I want to help you out because I'm only barely in this lower class thing, so I'm gonna try but to I'm pull- I'm better than you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm better gonna... than you, so I'm gonna try to pull you out. Uh-huh, exactly. And it's just like, I don't like you. Oh, no, not at all. But I like my head of ill enough that, like, mm -hmm. it makes up for it, I guess. <laughs> um, a bit more notes about this film. Like I said before, it wasn't a commercial success. Uh, and critics gave the film very mixed reviews. Um, essentially, all the reviews boil down to the cartoonish style doesn't match the subject matter, which I just read as it being too mature for a cartoon. Oh, um, I'm sorry, people. You're about... You you're, don't realize... you're about to get a real culture shock here in the 70s. It's like, you guys are living in the 70s? It's about to get a lot worse. <laughs> in fact, this is probably still high-class art compared to... <laughs> what we're going to be seeing. What I know we're going to be seeing. Uh-huh. Um, also, this was directed by John David Wilson, who, interestingly enough, worked at Disney and UPA at the same time. Wait, he worked at both of those at the same time? Mm-hmm. As working on this film? Well, no, because UPA is pretty much already dead and gone. Oh, okay. You're point. just saying in the past he was in working the, yeah, on Yeah, in the past, he worked on Peter Pan, um, left and worked at UPA to work on Mr. Magoo. Of course. Um, and then came back to Disney to work on Lady and the Tramp. I don't think he was very, like, you know, high up in the ranks at Disney or anything like that, but, like, he worked at Disney and UPA, and then he left and made his own studio, uh, Fine Arts Studios, is I think what it's called, and um, made a few films that were shown off at, like, film festivals and stuff, and then he made this movie, and that was pretty much it. He did go on to... Uh, work on a few other things, like, and this is why we might find the art style of this a bit familiar, he worked on the intro animation to Grease. If you say so. Um, I've actually only watched that movie once. Oh, come on, Sean! I know we did a music. I was in the musical in high school. We were both in that musical in high school. But also, you got to remember, we were in junior high. Uh huh. So we had like the lowest of low non-real parts. Not non-parts. And also, when so I never watched the movie before it came out, or we did it, and then at the cast party, I watched like bits and pieces of it, but I missed the beginning. Or if I did see it, I don't remember it. All I know is it's. This is the problem not great, with. <laughs> This is the problem with my parents being older than your parents, is I have a whole lot more cultural knowledge of, like... This age. This age than you do. Mm -hmm. Just because I've inherited it from my parents. Oh, absolutely. But anyway, he did the, the opening animation to Greece, and he also has a film credit on Fern Gully. Oh, okay. So... 
I don't know what exactly he did there. I assume he was an animator or something like that on Fern Gully, mm -hmm. but that's kind of cool. Neat. Also, another thing I want to talk about is apparently Eartha Kitt was the original Mahetta Bell on Broadway, and I just... nice. Okay. Do you remember yeah. who Eartha Kitt is? Uh, the name sounds very familiar. Yzma. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Obviously, she was much younger. Much younger, and, like, that would be closer to the time when she played, like, Catwoman on Batman or something like that. Oh, I forgot she did that. Yeah. She did that. Oh, the, that was the specific Bat Batman, like, uh, Adam West? Batman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think. Yeah. I would assume so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's that's hilarious. Eartha Kit got stuck with a lot of cat lady roles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God bless her soul. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to check it out, go ahead. Yeah, I give this one a light recommendation. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not fantastic, but it was fun and interesting. I really liked Mahetta Bell. The songs were enjoyable, not something I would listen to probably outside of this movie. But like It had a good It's a good time. A relatively good plot structure, but that's because it was based on mm -hmm. a pre existing thing of a play. Yeah, that was something So it actually had a good plot? Right, that but was there something there were still all these diatribes and random scenes that didn't matter. Uh-huh. That was something that after we finished with the movie, um, I was like, wow, this was, for being a movie from a studio we knew absolutely nothing about, and this was like, a, a, it's such an unknown film. I'm like, wow, that's, that was like a really well put together m movie. Like, a, like that was in a movie. Mm -hmm. So many times we watch one of these films from like a studio and it's their first time putting together a film or something like that, and it's just like, it doesn't really feel like a movie. It feels like a bunch of scenes coming together into mm -hmm. an hour long thing. But this was a movie and that's hard to describe, but it just had, it was coherent and it all flowed together nicely. Yeah, it was nice. Mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah. uh, next time, it's time again, Daniil. Yeah? It is a time for us to go back. Attack number one. <laughs> Revolution! Attack number one, number two! Yes. <laughs> We're going back to more volleyball! Woo! See you guys then.